Good evening, Launch Church International family, friends. Uh, we are back for uh, another Wednesday evening, um, a day that, that certainly uh, that God has made. We are excited uh, to be here uh, for the last installment uh, of Blockbusters. And I promise this is a movie or a clip tonight everybody probably will like. And so you'll... <laughs> I won't spoil it, but you you should like it. Um, we are, let's see, let me share my screen. Uh, is this, I think this is what I want here. Yes, no, well, okay. That is not what I want, one moment. All right, let's see if, I think that's what I want, all right. Uh, there we go. All right, how are we looking? Launch Church International. Somebody give me a sign. Looking good. All right. So, thank you. So back, uh, back to talk about blockbusters, uh, Living God's Story Part Four, um, and you know we'll do kind of a, a quick recap. Uh, in week one, we talked about uh, the movie Frozen. And we view the scene where Elsa saves uh, her sister, Anna, uh, and in doing so it demonstrates that sort of uh, salvific love or unconditional love that God certainly demonstrated for us, right? Jesus going to the cross was um, uh, an example of salvific love or unconditional love, right? There's nothing uh, that we could have done to earn it. We can't earn it today, right? Except that um, God has saved, has offered that, uh, his sacrifice, uh, his son, Jesus, right, for us, for our sins. So uh, that's what we talked about in week one. That clip from that movie, I, I think, was pretty powerful and apropos to, to talk about uh, unconditional love. In week two, as we continue on with our theme, Living God's Story through Blockbuster Movies, we looked at Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Uh, and it, in this particular clip, uh, Indiana Jones, uh, is his father's shot, played by Sir Sean Connery, I believe. He's shot and Indiana Jones has to, he comes to the, um, the edge of, uh, he, I guess they're on a mountain or something or whatnot. He comes to the, the edge of kind of this, this rock and there's a big chasm. And ultimately, there's an invisible bridge there, but he doesn't know that, right? But he certainly has to step out on faith or take a leap of faith, um, which is what he does. He lands on the bridge, obviously, crosses the bridge, gets what he needs to save his dad. And that was uh, an ultimate um, demonstration of faith, right? Um, it certainly was not by sight, right? And then so certainly we are called. Um, um, in our walk uh, with God. And as we increase that, uh, there will be things that we simply can't see before us, but we certainly need to do and act that thing out in faith. Amen. Week three or last week, uh, we looked at a clip from uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, and in this particular clip, uh, Sam, who sort of was, I don't want to call him a servant, but he was sort of kind of sworn uh, to never leave Frodo's side. And so in this particular clip um, uh, we shared last week, Frodo realizes that he has to sort of leave his friends to go destroy the ring. They're sleeping. He gets up, he leaves. Sam realizes that uh, Frodo's gone and he chases after him. Frodo has, uh, has jumped into a boat. He's pushed that thing from the shore and he is paddling away from the shoreline. Sam goes after him. He can't swim. But nonetheless, because of his devotion to his friend, he, he, he walks out in the water to the point that he begins to drown. Uh, Frodo comes back for him, save, saves him, and they certainly go on that journey together. And then certainly uh, what that particular scene in the clip showed um, was the fact that uh, they were he was devoted to his friend. And then so um, when you think about... Um, our relationship and what we're called to be uh, to God, to Jesus, are we devoted in that way, right? One could certainly um, ask, ask that question, right? And so that brings us um, to 
week four, certainly the, uh, the final week here of Blockbuster's Living God Story. Um, can you see yourself um, in the story, right? And we certainly, we are reminded sometimes uh, the world tells us that, uh, hey man, do what you feel, man. It's, it's your life. You've got these opportunities. You've got this and you've got that. But God is reminding us that uh, it's not really our story. It's God's story. And we're blessed to have a part in it, if, if you will. Don't miss your amen moment or your shout moment there. Once again, God is reminding us that really it's not our story, but it's God's story. And we are blessed to play a part in it. Amen. And so let's take a look at this week's scripture. All right. And so this week's scripture, scripture comes from Galatians 3, verses 26 through 29. We're looking at the NIV version. And it reads, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all you who are baptized, for all you who were baptized into Christ have, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And so that is an excellent, uh, excellent scripture. We had some great conversation prior to, uh, 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 to our time here tonight and our session here tonight. And I think that, that we will see how that discussion really uh, was a great uh, segue into what we'll talk about tonight. This particular scripture um, we are can, that we've talked about today, um, about how uh, God in Christ has created a new creation Right. And within uh, that new creation uh, is a new family. Right. And that's sort of kind of what we're talking about. Right. When we talk about um, living God's story for our lives, we are a part of that family. Right. Um, and sometimes the world will will tell us uh, and let us know that. Uh, no, you're, yeah, you know, you, you, you go to church, you talk about your living for God. You know, but you can do your own thing as if our story is pulled apart and separate and isolated from that from that thing. But the scripture is the scripture is clear, right? There's neither Jew nor Gentile, male or female, right? Uh, we're all one when we join that family. Uh, Paul wrote to the church at, in Galatia, which was facing adversity. Uh, their belief that because of Christ, they have been they have been brought together as a family. Uh, was being challenged. In Galatians 3, Paul wrote, uh, and we certainly read, uh, kind of read the scripture there. Uh, and then so if you look at that a little bit deeper in that particular passage, Paul describes how the Galatian believers and all believers are children of God. Um, this is a new family. So in, in this way, uh, whether you're here at Launch Church International uh, or another church, yes, we have our own individual uh, houses of worship with different addresses and so on and so forth. Uh, but really, um, uh, in God's family, uh, we're not bound simply by an address or by a state or anything like that, right? Uh, we should all be connected uh, as, as one. Amen? What is the big idea of the message today? Uh, and the big idea is that God places us in a family where we belong, right? Amen. And so uh, some of us have different roads. Uh, um, I forgot to open in prayer. And then so I certainly will, will certainly kind of probably back up to do that or address that at the end. So I certainly apologize there, but there's a lot going on um, uh, in, in our society, right? And we followers of Christ uh, are certainly called to talk about the good news, to talk about Jesus and share his love uh, uh, with us and for one another, right? And so uh, as a family, we simply have to do better. What, is, um, what does that look like, right? When God places us in, in, in the family that we belong. We have our own individual families. We've got our own challenges. We have our own individual things that we come from, right? But when we, when we put on the name of Christ, all that other stuff goes away, right? And so we certainly have a particular challenge 
um, um, to to keep the former away. Certainly, when we when we talk about God's family, Amen. All right, topics. Something we've talked about. Um, we're talking about family of God. We're talking about a community. We're talking about a sense of belonging. What does this picture look like, right? That's a picture of a lot of different people. That's what a community looks like, right? That's what um, that's what we look like, uh, not only in church, but in our extended communities, right? Think about your neighbors. Think about uh, folks you've gone to school with, right? Think about relationships you've had uh, over the course of your life. And those folks in that and those relationships probably look a lot like this picture. I know for me it does, right? When I tell my friends I was a kid in uh, in KC growing up, I mean I like man I, I like country music. I liked all types of stuff, right? They just sort of laugh, rock, rock and roll, uh, blues, whatever. Um, that certainly reflected the various environments and friends that I had, right? And so so similarly uh, in God's family that reflection should be there as well, right? Uh, we shouldn't be bound by, you know, denomination or belief or, or sort of kind of some of those things. We are truly uh, a community, right? You know, we have a responsibility uh, to certainly check uh, on one another and, kind of, and conduct ourselves in that fashion. All right, all right, I promised that, um, that the blockbuster movie today uh, would be something I think that uh, everybody likes. <laughs> and uh, we're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, right? And uh, I'll, I'll share some information with you here. Uh, you know, when asked about Guardians of Galaxy Volume Two director, James Gunn, uh, he, he says this. He says, to me, they are at the core of a, above being a space adventure, Above being a comedy, they are really a family drama. This is what the director James Gunn says about the movie, right? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, they're a ragtag group consisting of uh, a criminal, <laughs> a rocket, <laughs> a widower, right? Let's put some different uh, nouns, right, if, if you will, right? A criminal rocket, a widower, Drax, <laughs> orphans, Star Lord, Gamora, and Nebula, right? Two sisters, uh, and Outcast, Groot, and Manus, right? And this sort of group makes up a family. So, here again, if I were to go back to, now certainly I'm not calling anybody a criminal or anything like that, but look at this photo here different backgrounds, uh, different families, two parent household, single. Uh, uh, some some folks could be from another country, right? We're made up uh, um, 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 of a, a unique uh, uh, background uh, when we talk about God's family, right? It's not just the, the folks we grew up with or, or the folks from my, in my neighborhood or on my block, what I'm comfortable with. We are pretty expansive, right? So when we talk about the movie uh, uh, Guardians uh, of the Galaxy Volume 2, that's sort of what we are, what we're talking about, right? And so um, when we think about this particular clip, I will we'll cue this up here. Um, we'll come back and sort of talk about, uh, talk about that a little bit. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment so I can go into the clip, put it in the chat and then have you go watch it. Now, I did just solid tonight. I know it's a rainy day and all that good stuff. This clip's about 20 seconds, but it but it certainly it certainly proves the point. So let me stop sharing for a moment. All right, good. All right, so let's get back to let's share the screen here. I'm gonna figure this this puppy out. Uh, Oh, let's, let's go back a little bit. That's okay. All right. So in, in that particular clip, um, it was pretty quick, right? But it certainly makes, it, it, it certainly, I think, makes the point, 
right? And then so you have some comedy in there sort of at the end, right? Um, it, but I think this clip was good, right? It, it, it sort of, I think, challenges us, if you will, right? Because uh, we all come from different backgrounds. And then so I have an idea of what friends look like, what friends do. You have an idea. Other folks have an idea, right? But what? But when we join God's family, what God challenges challenges us to do, right, and commands us to do is put your own thoughts and feelings aside. Do it this way, <laughs> right? Do it my way, and the rest uh, the rest will take care of itself. We have, uh, yeah, absolutely. We're not friends. We're family. That's an excellent point, Pastor Jalal. And so I promise that clip would be short. Uh, we'll certainly ask you your opinions and kind of what, what you think about that clip uh, here. All right. So what does being a part uh, of God's family look like? Uh, we've got uh, an application point here, right? Uh, no matter your background or who you are, there is a place for you in the household of faith. And so, you know, when you think about your journey, um, um, initially starting out for Christ, right? You may have felt different, right? Um, you may have been struggling for a while and you, you may have wanted to join a church or certainly uh, interact uh, with those folks that were speaking in tongues and jumping around or doing whatever, but it just didn't feel right, right? And then so much like this, this picture here, um, everything in here is the same, except maybe the one with the red top's a little bit different. Right. Jesus is reminding us, although it may appear different, we're certainly all the same. Right. This is what Paul uh, was saying to the church in, in, in Galatia. Right. Uh, some of the people in the congregation may have been Jewish, may have been of Jewish origin. Right. Uh, some may have been Greek. The Jews had rules that uh, they followed that kept them from associating um, with anyone who wasn't Jewish. Right, you can find that in Galatians two eleven through fourteen, but none of that mattered now. Uh, some of the congregation may have been slaves, uh, perhaps orphans. Uh, we talked about that, uh, who never had any relationship with their parents, um, and they could be sitting at a table with slave owners, right? And so here again, when you when you join uh, the family of of God, we've got uh, many different folks. Uh, if you look at, um, you know, the things that are sort of plaguing our society with mass shootings and, and, and various things, right? Uh, my humanity says, I don't I want no parts of, of those shooters, right? But that's not necessarily what God says, right? And so uh, uh, more of God and less of me because uh, I would never advance and grow uh, in Christ if, if I took over, so to speak, right? And so that's a significant challenge. Right. But Paul says, uh, you know, none of that matter. Right. He says that in Galatians 3 and 28, believers are all one, united by the fact that God has adopted us into his household of faith, Galatians 3 and 26. All right. And so we've certainly got to remember that. Right. Um, we've got different uh, backgrounds. We come from different places. Uh, you know, but the challenge is not our will, but God's will. And so um, I'm going to stop there for tonight because I, I certainly would love to see uh, um, kind of comments, what your thoughts are about that particular clip. As we talk about family, we talk about community uh, in the context, and I'll start sharing here, in the, con in the context of um, what's plaguing us in society, I'm, I'm certainly curious to see and hear uh, what you all think. And so I want to open this up for comments, my friends. Okay. Okay, so just something to think about. Um, I think sometimes when we, when we think about family, it's not always a great experience, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when, when people make the reference, you know, uh, we're like family. For some people, they pause, and, I, and I'm just really speaking from experience. I had someone tell me this. When you talk about, oh, we're family, then I get suspect because my, my family has dirty tendencies, right? 
So I, sometimes I, I, I think we, we don't always discuss, like, what does a healthy family look like? Mm-hmm. What is healthy boundaries and healthy support and all that cool stuff? You know, what is that? How do we disagree and remain positive and healthy? And just because I disagree with you or I don't support you in one area of, of life or your decision-making process doesn't mean I'm, not, I'm going to neglect you, reject you, and I'm not going to uh, be there for you. It just means that's something that I don't agree with you. So I, I think there are like facets of family that, that can be just, you know, revealed on, in a more positive light. But I, I, I appreciate the clip this week, uh, Pastor Jeff. <laughs> 20 seconds. Did you like the right. movie? That's the question. <laughs> Actually, I did. I love this. I love this movie because none of these people look alike. There was no way, right. no way you could, with the natural eye, assume that they were related naturally, right? Mm-hmm. And and I think that's that's our experience. I think even for me as an adult is that the people that I'm closest to that really are my ride or die people, though they're not the same. They are people that God has placed in my life, and and they are my brothers and sisters in Christ, and and we do have healthy boundaries, and we have healthy, hearty discussions when we're disagreeing with one another, and we can hold each other's feet to the fire, right? Um, I think it's more of a like-minded spirit than, than anything else when it, when it comes to purpose and family, right? So when you're fulfilling your purpose, God sends you people that will help you and assist you. Um, and and but that's that may be the just the visionary part of my personality too. Anyway, but thank you. I, I loved it. I got it. Thanks. <laughs> Amen. Well, no, I, I think you make a, a great point. Um, and even in that clip, although it was uh 20 seconds, right? I think you can kind of see sort of sort of all of that, right? Uh, and, and and having, the, you know, the fact that we are family, we should be able to have those conversations, right? And so like earlier, um, you know, to your point, we were sort of talking about, you know, the church's role in the community uh, and, and certainly doing more. I mean, I think sometimes we don't say things because we're worried about, even if we say them appropriately, uh, how that other person may receive it, right? But is, but is that what God is saying, right? You know, um, I think it was Nathan, right? Whether it was called to talk to David, right? I believe, correct me if I'm I'm wrong. Uh, And, you know, God told him to do that thing. He had to walk it out, regardless of how you felt about it, right? And so, you know, that's family, right? So, no, I think you make uh, make an excellent point. Awesome. Um, Who else has something to share, dear brothers and sisters? Um, I would have to agree with that. Um, <clears throat> I made a, um, a comment in the chat that uh, family doesn't always have to be blood related um, because I think oftentimes that's what we think. And like um, Teresa was saying, if you have had a bad experience, that's going to reflect on um, how you relate to others. Um, but um, for me, I have some very good friends that I consider family. Um, and, you know, as was mentioned earlier, uh, you know, they're also Christian and I consider them my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and we may not be blood related, but we're Christ related. Mm-hmm. So to me, that's just as powerful. And, you know, I, I thank the Lord that um, I grew up in a tight knit family where um, I look back on my childhood with fondness. Mm-hmm. Um, and. I think that has helped me in my relationships with other people as well, even with um, my friendships. Um, and I know that for some people, um, it can be very difficult, um, especially if you didn't have um, a positive father figure, you know, to see God as the person that he is, the one that he is, as opposed to um, seeing him through the human eyes in human form. You know, so I think that makes a big difference as well. So yes, I totally agree. Thank you. And um, by the way, I've never seen the movie. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea what the movie is about, but yes, I agree with that clip. 
Awesome. Uh, Miss Yvette, thank you. If you get a chance, uh, certainly take a look at it. It's a pretty good comedy. You know, it's a comedy. It's a little bit of action. Um, but it's certainly, I think, a, a, a movie worth watching. Um, I think you make an excellent point. Um, you know, uh, I know for me and I'm sure many of you, uh, outside of my twin brother, obviously in the media family, I have great relationships with family, but the folks I probably talk to, uh, at least on a weekly basis, are folks that aren't blood related, right? Um, and, you know, we're Christian, we've got the same kindred spirit. I had, a, had one of my students tell me, um, um, she's Muslim, she's from Iraq, and uh, we were sort of kind of talking. She likes, to, she likes to come in and talk sometime because uh, it helps her sort of kind of work on her, not just the English, but also... Um, um, you know, sometimes we say things and just from culturally, she just doesn't understand it, right? But she looked, she looked at me going, she was going through Ramadan and she said, you know, uh, she said, Mr. Jeff, <laughs> she said, I wouldn't be a Muslim if I didn't believe in Jesus, right? <laughs> so here again, um, she certainly may be of a different religion culturally, but we can have that conversation, right? And I learned something, certainly something from her as well. So amen, uh, Mr. Ms. Yvette, thank you. Um, is anyone, Ms. Yolanda says, um, great message, Pastor Jeff, have a good night. Thank you. I think they had to jump off. Uh, is there anyone else that wants to share a thought or a comment? I got a little something for you. Wonderful yes, sir. Pastor Jeff, and I indeed like the movie and I like the clip as well. Um, it reminded me of, um, the graduation I went to earlier this week for uh, Kaya, she graduated from uh, St. Philip Neri um, Catholic School. Um, that was a totally different uh, walk for me. Uh, really, it was the first time I had ever been into to a Catholic church um, as far as their mass and uh, a graduation. Um, but you said something that, that was very similar to what the... Uh, the reverend said, he said that as they were getting ready to do communion, um, he says, you know, I know that we are all of different uh, religions and faiths. And um, here, you know, in our Catholic faith as Christians, um, we, we do um, communion. And um, that is just a part of what we do and if you are not, you know, Catholic, then we just ask that you still get in line and come through and you just cross your arms as you go through. Now, that whole experience was was um, it was a lot different. It was it was something I was like intrigued to want to see. But I still felt like I was amongst family. Mm -hmm. They didn't feel like I was amongst family. I didn't feel like I was a visitor. Um, they have a portion in there where. Uh, they tell you to love your neighbor, so you turn around and you're shaking hands and, um, you know, giving hugs if, if you're that comfortable, but I did not, <clears throat> not at one time did I feel uncomfortable being there, um, and, and I mentioned to my sister as we were sitting there talking, I said, um, you know, wherever I go, I'm going to be about my father's business, Amen. and so I'm here, I'm in another house of the Lord. They may uh, do things a lot differently from what I do or used to do, but uh, I'm sure going to be about my father's business. So I extended love before it was extended to me, but just to see it openly, it was a beautiful thing. Um, you don't often, you don't always walk into a place, another house of the Lord, and get that same type of feeling like we are family. We are God's children and we are sisters and brothers, regardless of, you know, background, religion, faith, and all that. So, yeah, great message tonight. Amen, Minister Darnell. Um, I certainly know <laughs> that what you speak. Uh, uh, but, you know, I would say, hey, based on, uh, on that experience, right, um, I think that can even grow your faith too, right? Uh, yeah. because you, you've seen that perspective and in some cases you're like, oh, okay, you know, well, we do it this way. Maybe that's okay. Yeah. I see some things a little bit. Right. But, but to your point, you know, I think the, the cool thing was you never felt like 
you didn't belong, right? You never like the um, uh, um, uh, the picture I had here with the houses, and the one had the red, uh, yeah, the red top, right? You never felt like you you didn't belong or you stuck out, right? Um, they didn't let a, a difference in practice or, or faith or whatnot or, or belief stop them from worshiping God. Therefore, you can worship. So, no, I think that that was that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and you know what? To be honest with me, now that you, you've seen that experience, but you may be more apt if so should you choose. I've got a lot of friends, certainly, that uh, uh, have sent their friends, send their friend, their kids to parochial school or, or Catholic school, although they're not Catholic, right? And so yeah. um, um, you certainly may be an, an advocate for that now, right? If, if Certainly, if you've thought about it or on the fence, certainly you may be like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> yeah, because I mean... I was, I just saw the setting of it was a smaller setting. Right. A little more, I guess you could say a little more child focused. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot quieter, so in a sense. And mm -hmm. I can say I never really, I just, I, I, I believe what, what made me feel comfortable with her going there is that the belief system um, and the culture that it that it was uh providing right not different so but yeah and and i can feel that same love so you know when she was walking around and hugging all the teachers and hugging all her friends you know i felt like wow she really came in here and felt right as a part of this and it's just because of that culture it's that it's that god sense that um that's that god-led culture so yeah it's great Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing, Minister Darnell. Um, um, do we have another? Hey, just wanted to pop in real quick. Yeah, everybody just has really great uh, points tonight. Um, I just wanted to, um, I thought about, uh, I was watching a few weeks ago, I just happened to be watching, um, I think it was uh, T.D. Jakes. He has uh, he had a Wednesday night Bible study and I just popped in after we got done. And um, he was kind of talking about it in, uh, along the way of that family piece. But after the service, uh, he had you know, he did a and a and it was a young lady that stood up and, and she was kind of going through some things and she was really distraught and kind of broken. Uh, and, and, you know, to make a long story short, hopefully. Uh, she kind of began to describe, you know, that she didn't feel supported within her family because she was an entrepreneur and she was doing all of these great things. Um, and she was just doing a lot of things, right? But she was just kind of in tears and she just kind of, she would begin to describe to the bishop, she said, you know, I just don't feel, you know, like I'm being supported, you know, with my, my, my family. I And she kind of, gave the you know example of she just thought you know her family would be more supportive mm -hmm. of things that she was doing and he really just encouraged her he's like look you know you know how jesus even described in mark six and four and he said you know a prophet is not without honor except for his own you know hometown and mm -hmm. among relatives and his own. but any so what he was trying to say was sometimes even amongst your own family because of the familiarity right we don't always get the support that we are desiring uh, in our hearts because of that familiarity. And so I was just like, man, you know, he kind of struck a chord there because I think sometimes, you know, even within our own personal families and, and even within our church home, because we kind of grew up together or whatnot, and we've been together for so long, um, that maybe we don't feel as recognized. And so I, I just kind of take this point or, or take the opportunity to say, you know, maybe there's someone or maybe you felt uh, like you don't, like you haven't been recognized or you don't feel like you're supported or you don't feel like, you know, um, like you have been, um, you know, 
you know, the thank yous haven't been there and the honor and all of those different things haven't been there uh, because we can, as family, get so close to one another and get so familiar to one another because her point was that she felt, to your point, Pastor Jeff, like, man, you know, uh, some sometimes you relate more and get more feedback from people who are not relate or who not blood related to you right uh and and so and so and one thing that he said uh tdj said he said look man he's like you know he's like i got kids right now who are not necessarily doing doing the right thing he says but one thing i tell you what i'm never gonna stop loving them mm -hmm. um, they're always gonna be my son or my daughter and there's nothing too bad that they can do that will ever make them stop make me stop loving them he mm -hmm. said it might hurt me <laughs> it might break my heart but they'll never stop being my son they'll never start being my daughter um and so that just it, it struck a chord with me uh, because i know that we probably all can relate to that whether it's you know in the church or whether it's in our own families and we already know that within families there's dysfunction and no one's perfect and things like that but one thing that I wanted to put out there is that there's nothing that you can do that will make me stop loving you uh, and make me Amen. ostracize you or, or judge you or whatnot. Uh, and, um, and there's nothing that can make Jesus um, stop loving you and, and giving you his best and giving you his all. I mean, as a matter of fact, he gave his life for all of us and there's no, there's, there's no, distance that we can go right um that will make him stop loving us so um i just wanted to throw that out there just from a little bit of a different perspective that you know there are going to be times where we don't feel honored or recognized within our own family groups um but to know that at the end of the day listen i got your back I love you. There's nothing that you'll ever be able to do that's going to make me stop loving and supporting you and, and having your back. And obviously, God is bigger than me, right? And so even, you know, to that point, there's nothing that's going to ever, ever uh, do be anything that's going to make God stop loving you. So God bless you. Really good message tonight. Certainly, certainly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very encouraged tonight and uh, love everybody. Amen, Pastor Lau. Excellent. Uh, thanks for sharing. Excellent story. I, I think that uh, as you were, as you have been doing the Fail Forward series, I think that that even uh, kind of reminds me of that a little bit, right? In the sense that when, when you talk about if you've already accomplished something, you know how, um, then the next thing that, that 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 God has for you to do, right, is something completely different. Right. And, and maybe sometimes uh, with our family, you know, we know we already have their support. We're trying to do something new <laughs> and we're trying to get them on board. And God can simply be saying, you don't need to get them on board. Right. They already on board. Right. I've got some other folks that uh, I need to get you in front of so they can help take you where I need you to go. Right. So, no, I think that's uh, that's certainly an excellent point. And I think you brought that out in the uh, in the fail forward series. So. Um, excellent point. Thanks for thanks for sharing, Pastor Jamie. Um, I know you came in after the clip. Was there anything that you wanted to share, or, or Brother James? What was the clip? I'm sorry. Did Guardians. I... It's, uh, let me repost it in the in the chat. It was the 20 second clip about family from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So we're just talking about talking about family. <laughs> gotcha. No, the conversation has been really good. Um, I love how uh, it's confirmation when Pastor Delisle brings up a, a verse that you say often about oh, yeah. being the future. Yeah, um, Mark. Yeah, that's one uh, that Jeff reminds me of all the time when he's pouring into <laughs> me, telling me that I can go out and yeah. do speeches and things like that because sometimes it's going to be those people who are furthest from us who are going to support us, I guess. Is a, um, Amen. Then Amen. will come along after they see the evidence. So. Amen. Amen. And th that was actually brought out. Even... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. What? No, I said I'll watch the clip later. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give my 20 commentary. seconds. <laughs> no, awesome. Thanks for um, thanks for sharing. And that, that that is one of my favorite scriptures. I I sort of kind of uh, 
I, I will say all the time, uh, prophets say without honor, even in their own country. Um, anyone else, uh, Brother James? Um, anything, my friend? You are muted, good brother. I think you're on mute. There you go. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to see my face. It <laughs> reminds me of once we are um, baptized and we are united as God's family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah, so when we are united in love. So yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. We're called to That's take not one spirit. Absolutely. That's what I learned tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, it sounds like you already knew that thing, Brother James. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thanks for thanks for sharing. I see a phone number, and I do want to see if that's anyone before we proceed. Is that anyone on the phone? Got somebody dialing in. That's Elder Sandra. Oh, okay. Elder Sandra, maybe you're working or busy. Is there anything you have for us, Elder? If not, we will. Yeah, Pastor Jeff, Jeff, great lesson. I just kind of just got home, so I kind of coming in late. Um, but, you know, I heard the lesson. Just, I, I didn't hear all of it. I just hear everybody put in, and I think you were talking about the family. Yes. Um, and all I would say about the family is that, you know, we have to realize, yes, as Brother James said, we are the family, our family, yes, as in the body of Christ, we are all one. Um, but at the same time, besides our carnal family, we also have to remember that there are people on the outside who are also our family. That means everyone that we come in close contact with, whether it's on our job, you know, whether it's in a supermarket or whatever, that they are part of our family and we have to, you know, reach out to them in, with, you know, showing them love. Um, and as Pastor Jalal was saying about appreciation, sometimes, you know, we forget to tell people, you know, how much you appreciate them. Um, and we do it even with our own family. Sometimes I myself as a mother, I sometimes forget and every so often, you know, I will call my son and I say, Hey, you know what? I haven't told you I love you in a while, <laughs> you know, right. because you take it for granted, you know, that we you, we need to tell each other, hey, I appreciate you did this for me, or I appreciate what you have done. And it means a lot to that person, you know, it gives them a, a sense of, you know, purpose, a, a sense of achieving something and feel good about themselves. And And as, you know, as we know that as believers in Christ, we are part of God's family and we are looking forward, forward to that day when we will be with him and as a, a family of his with being joint heirs and being no more headaches and pains and everything that is down here right now. You know, we're talking about family right now and I'm thinking about the 18 people that just lost their lives, you know, mm -hmm. that was, those are, were kids were part of a family. And you could imagine what those family is going through at this present time. So, you know, we need to realize as a family, do not take each other for granted every day, but live every day as it, it is, you know, the best day and as it's a, a, a gift from God. So I appreciate the lesson very much. Amen. Thank you, Elder Sandra. Excellent, uh, excellent insight. Uh, we certainly uh, appreciate you making time to uh, to sort of pop in the lesson. Um, um, I, as I mentioned, I <laughs> can't believe I forgot to to to, to pray us in, but I certainly will. Um, will certainly pray us out and uh, just certainly keep uh, keep all of the you know the victims over the last. Um, several weeks uh keep those families uh certainly in your prayer um um certainly a tough thing we we certainly are, are taught and called to keep the the families of the perpetrators and as well as the perpetrators themselves uh in our prayers as well um there's certainly uh 
as Pastor Lau put it earlier, a, a demonic thing that is going on, uh, and we certainly need to intercede as followers of Christ. And so um, certainly pray with me. I'll, I'll go ahead and pray us out. Um, Father God, thank you for allowing us to, to come together uh, this Wednesday evening. Uh, we do not take this opportunity lightly. We ask that you place a, a special blessing in your hand uh, on the victims uh, of the senseless violence. Uh, we ask that you uh, that you you put a stop to it, uh, that you change the minds of folks uh, that certainly feel like they want to do things like this, that you put the right people uh, in front of them that can guide them from making decisions like that. Uh, we ask that you empower us um, as, as followers of you, as followers of Christ, to do the things that we need to do to ensure uh, that our families and our communities are strong and that we certainly can talk about you. Uh, all these things we, uh, well, let me forget um, uh, those that are traveling, those that can make it, those that could not, we ask that you place a, uh, a special prayer uh, on them and their families. Uh, we ask that everybody have a great uh, and safe um, holiday weekend. And we look forward uh, to seeing everyone so we can come and worship you again on Sunday. All these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen.